and grace and be a sign of hope, joy, unity to the family. Together with all our particular intentions, we begin our celebration. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Yes. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries.
Let me now sing of my friend, my friend's song concerning his vineyard. My friend had a vineyard on a fertile hillside. He spaded it, cleared it of stones, and planted the choicest vines. Within it, he built a watchtower. He hooed out a wine press. Then he looked for crop of grapes. But it, what it yielded was wild grapes. Now inhabitants of Jerusalem, and people of Judah, judge between me and my vineyard. What more was there for me to do for my vineyard that I had not done? Why, when I looked for the crops of grapes, it bring forth wild grapes? Now I will let you know. What I mean to do with my vineyard, <coughs> take away its hedge, give it to grazing, break through its walls, let it be trampled, Yes, I will make it a ruin. It should not be pruned or holy, but overgrown with thorns and vines. I will command the clouds not to send rain upon it. The vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and the people of Judah are his cherished plan. He looked for judgment, but see bloodshed, for justice, but part the outcry. The word of the Lord. Thank you. Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, 
Whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever <coughs> is gracious, if there is any excellent, and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing what you have learned and received and heard and seen in me. Then the God of peace will be with us, with you. The word of the Lord. Jesus said to the chief priests and the elders of the people, Hear another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a hedge around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a tower. Then he leased it to tenants and went on a journey. When the eventual time came near, drew near, he sent his servants to the tenants to obtain his produce. But the tenants seized the servants, and one they beat, another they killed, and the third they stoned. Again he sent other servants, more numerous than the first ones, but they treated them in the same way. Finally, he sent his son to them thinking, they respect my son. But when the tenant saw the son, they said to one another, this is a hare. Come, let us kill him and acquire his inheritance. They seized him, threw him out of the vineyard, and killed him. What would the owner of the vineyard do to this, those tenants when he comes? They answered him, He will put those wretched men to a wretched death, and release his vineyard to other tenants, who will give him the produce at the proper times. Jesus said to them, Did you never read in the scripture that the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone? By the Lord has this been done, and it is wonderful in our eyes. Therefore I say to you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people who will produce its fruit. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise the Lord. Jesus God is good all the time. All the time. All the time. All the time. You are most welcome to this 27th Sunday in Ordinary Time. As we have just greeted each, each other with this greeting, God is good. We thank God for the gift of this day, the gift of each one of us, the gift of all those God has given us to take care with a loving heart. We should never take it for granted. We need to turn to Him in every moment of our life and we say, thank you God. Continue being with me so that I, I remain a blessing to others, that I remain a source of hope peace, 
joy to those whom I meet. This Sunday, 27th Sunday, the readings we have just had, they are underscoring the dominant theme or, or word, vineyard, the vineyard of the Lord. From the first reading to the gospel, the word vineyard is running many times. And this word, the vineyard, if we remember well, it began in the liturgy of Sundays from the 25th Sunday. Remember God went out, all the landowner did, went out to hire the workers. The morning, at 9, at midday, at 3 p.m., then at 5 in the evening. Go and work in my vineyard. And at the end of the time, he paid them each a denarius. <clears throat> Equality, the love of God to all. Last Sunday, we remember the father saying, called his two sons. He told the first one, my beloved son, will you go and work in the vineyard today? He said, no, I don't want the father was so depressed. He went to the second one, and the second one immediately said yes, but he never went. Who did the will of the father? Today we hear again the word vineyard is appearing, and the more so is calling you and me to know that we are the tenants in the vineyard of the Lord. We are the workers in the vineyard of the Lord. And what is expected of you and me? To produce the desired fruits at expected time. At expected time, God will ask each one of us two things. Number one, to give accountability of the responsibilities you have been having in this life. The second one is, have you been able produce the desired fruits or you are being a, a constantly producing the sour grapes as we just heard from the first reading of today the first reading of today we hear God took all what he can to put up his garden his vineyard and he took all his time, his love. He did what he can. He planted the good vines and the soil was fertile with the expectation that it, they will produce sweet grapes. I know you have tasted grapes. If not uh, real grapes, you have tasted sweet wines. Eh? To produce sweet wines. But what came out? Sour grapes. He got on a sour grapes. He was disappointed. He said, I will take away the vineyard and give it to other tenants who will produce the sweet grapes. The first reading is underscoring the love of God to the children of Israel. God did everything he can to lead the children of Israel out of slavery to the promised land. In the promised land, he was there to guide them. He took care of them with love and mercy. But what turned out? They were unfaithful to him. They did not live according to his commandments. They turned against God. That's why he said he did what he could and at the end he got on his sour grapes. And he asked the question, what more can I do? What more can I do? I have done everything. And what are these sour grapes? These sour grapes, according to me, is when we Christians baptized, confirmed in faith in the Catholic Church, and we know the sacraments, the commandments, at the same time we go on to compromise our Christian witness. We don't live according to the teachings of the Church. What we produce the sour grapes. God is lamenting with you. 
God is waiting for you to make a new turn. When you live with unforgiveness, bitterness in your heart, anger, jealous, envy, these are the sour grapes. These are the sour grapes. The children of Israel had all the opportunity, the possibilities to change their mentality and attitude. They were stubbornly unfaithful to God's ways. Are we like the children of Israel? I say no because we are here listening to God's word. And as the Psalm 95 says, as today you listen to God's word, harden not your, your heart. Allow God's grace to enter into your heart. Make a new turn. Forget the past which might have been so bitter, so unpleasing, unhappy. Begin a new life with God, with Jesus in your life. The vineyard. I can say the vineyard is a plantation, and I will be right to say the vineyard is a plantation of the vines bearing the grapes. The vineyard, in the biblical terms, are the people of Israel, the privileged people. But today the vineyard refers to the church, and the church is you and me who are here standing and listening to God's word. We are the vineyard of the Lord. We are the tenants of the Lord. We are the steward to take care of what God has given us as a gift. And we are to take care of this with love and compassion, following the good heart of the good shepherd. Not according to our way of understanding, but according to the spirit of Jesus. So you and me, we are the vineyard of the Lord, we are the tenants, the stewards. Whatever we have, we are not the owners. We just take care. At the end of it, we are called, we shall be called to give the accountability of what we have taken care of. As we hear the psalm of today, the vineyard refers to the people of Israel. We are the new people of Israel. And the psalm invokes again God to look down from heaven and see the vineyard, to have mercy because these people have gone astray. They have disobeyed your ways. Once again, O Lord of hosts, look down from heaven and see. Take care of this vineyard. It's an invocation of a person who has understood his relationship with God who has looked back in his life and sees and recognizes that God has been there for him. And with a humble heart, turns back to God to invoke him, to come back to help him in this journey of life. In the Gospel, we hear the landlord, the owner, Continue sending them, the servants in his vineyard. The first group of the servants, as we heard, they were mistreated, beaten, arrested, killed, and chased out of the vineyard. Then he said, let me send more. The same thing happened. And what was his third step? Let me send my beloved son. They will respect him and the same thing happened. They said, Behold, the hair is coming, the next day of kin is coming. Let us kill him and we take over the vineyard. Then he asks those who are around, What will the owner do with these tenants? He'll chase them away and give the vineyard to those who can produce it, fruits. Sweet grapes, not sour grapes. In the Gospel of today, we underline some important lessons. The first group of the servants sent by the landowner to his vineyard, and these are the former prophets, Old Testament prophets who came. The second group are the 
New Testament prophets. His son is our Lord Jesus Christ who was arrested, killed, and his blood was poured for you and for me, for our salvation. Accepting Jesus as the only son of God makes you and me to be in perfect relationship with God in order to merit that crown of salvation at the end of time. Refusing Jesus is refusing salvation, is refusing that inner happiness, that inner joy at the end of time. How can we accept Jesus? How can we be able to produce the sweet grapes? In the second reading, St. Paul underscores the aspect of prayer. If we pray sincerely, humbly, and we ask the Lord for what is pure, what is just, what is lovely, what is gracious, what is just, then we are able to produce the desired grapes. My dear friends in Christ, time keep on moving. Time is moving is not with us. It is today that we continue turning to the Lord with humility, as St. Paul says in the second letter, reading we have just had, to produce these necessary grapes in the vineyard of the Lord. Here in the church, what are you asking of the Lord? How is your heart today? Is it heavy? Are you carrying something against someone? Are you having some bitterness in your heart? Ask the Lord that he removes that bitterness that you are able to produce the sweet grapes which are desired by the Lord. Let us become a blessing to one another. Let us become a source of hope to one another. And this is what is expected of us. And how will you do that? When we remain attached to the Lord. If you remain in me and I in you, you will produce the necessary fruits. And your fruits will remain. I am the, the vine and you are the branches. You can't do that without Jesus. Otherwise, we shall be ending producing the sour grapes. Maybe even some of us, we are not able to produce even a, a grape, a fruit. What are you doing in life? What are you doing in the house of the Lord? God needs you. Jesus needs your collaboration. Today being the 7th of October, the month of our Holy Rosary, is de dedicated to our Lady of the Holy Rosary. And this is one of the fruits we to produce by praying the Rosary, the Holy Rosary with faith and devotion, praying for one another and turning to our Mother Mary with faith and confidence in her intercession because Jesus himself entrusted the heart of us under the cross, saying, Behold your, your mother, behold your son, in the name of John the Baptist. The entrance song we sang today it was touching the chorus. Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. Oh, do with me whatever you want. Here I am, Lord, can you turn my weak points in my life to become a source of blessing? a source of desired fruits in my life, so that I may become the source of love to those whom I need. Let us continue giving the necessary desired fruits, not with our own efforts, wisdom, but with the grace which comes from God the Father. Our response is, Loving Father, hear our prayer. Loving Father, hear our prayer. For the church, that we may lovingly and steadfastly let the Lord's vineyard bearing fruit for the benefit of God's kingdom, we pray to the Lord. Loving Father, hear our prayer. <clears throat> that let
elected officials may lead us to work to eradicate poverty, unemployment, and injustice, so that all may share in the riches of the nation. We pray to the Lord. For indigenous people here and across the world, especially those who have suffered mistrust or hostility for generations, that they may be given respect and dignity, we pray to the Lord. For those who have thought to work in the vineyard or mistreated those laboring for the Lord, that they may be moved to remorse and contrition, we pray to the Lord. For the blossoming of ministries at our parish and elsewhere, so that we may produce good fruit for the kingdom, we pray to the Lord. For the silence of our hearts. ourselves and all those in need of our prayers, those listed on our parish bulletin, that the prayers we hold in our hearts will be united to those of our patron saints Philip and James, and all who stand before the throne of the Lamb, we pray to the Lord. Now we Father, hear our prayers. Lord our Father, is our humble prayers we present you through Christ our Lord. Amen.
proclaim everywhere your mighty words, for you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Timothy, our bishop, 
and all the clergy, the members of our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Our Master, so we pray that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph and spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be compared to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we believe in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say,
may be refreshed and nourished by the sacrament which we have received, so as to be transformed into what we consume through Christ our Lord. Amen. The announcements. The second collection being taken up at all the Masses today, the initial offering collection. Please be as generous as your means. This week's Sanctuary Land and Altar Bread are a special intention for Tanisha Mason Prasad and Renson. Saints Philip and James confirmation classes are in progress. Students must be in grades seven and above, including adults. Children not baptized in Saint Philip and James must bring their baptism certificates. The cost will be $50 per child. Please remember to return the miscellaneous to the stand in the rear of the church and pick up a bulletin for more announcements. Thank you. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thank you, Jesus. And I have a blessed weekend and Sunday. Thank you, Jesus.